Hello, in this video we're going to look at the intuition of why a gamma function is equal to a factorial. And actually I read a post from 3blue, 1brown asking if anyone had an intuitive explanation on why this property holds. So I spent the past couple hours trying to figure this out and get a feel for why it happens. And this is my approach on the intuition of why gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. So very quickly, the gamma function, gamma of n, is equal to this integral. Okay. So if we just look at the function here and call it f of x, and, and n is given, so it's for a given value n. And if we plot it, it looks like this. They always go up and then they come down. And as n increases, actually it starts out lower, equals at x equal 1, goes way up and then back. And so each additional n, this hump or the mode, is uh, it's shifted to the right and goes way up. And so the gamma function is actually the area under this curve. And so maybe if we can find an intuitive way to uh, estimate the area under the curve, maybe that'll help us give a better feel for why the gamma is uh, related to the factorial. So that's our goal, is we're going to try to develop a way to estimate this area under the curve that gives us an intuitive feel for why it's a factorial. So first of all, let's find the mode. Where does the mode happen? And you find that by taking the, the uh, derivative of the function and setting it equal to zero. And I'm going to go through this sort of quickly and then solving for x. So it's n minus 1. Now what that says is for each additional n, it's actually only shifted over 1. You know, when, in, when we plug in n, it's n minus 1. When you plug in n minus for n plus 1, then it's n. So the mode of this is only shifting over by 1. But let's look at the height of this. And so we plug in the mode to our function and we get this. And this function um, grows quite rapidly. And so for each additional n, like I said, it starts out low. At x equal 1, it's the same but then it really goes up each successive time. Okay, So there's some characteristics about this curve. Let's find the inflection point. So it, it's starting to be concave up, and then it's concave down, and then it's concave up. So somewhere there's some inflection points, and that may help us. So the inflection points is the second derivative of our function, and, and it's this. I'll go through it quickly. Set it equal to 0. Uh, factor out the common things that you can divide those over and this is a quadratic and then when you put this in the quadratic function or the you know the formula you get x is equal to n minus 1 plus or minus the square root of n minus 1 now let's find the height of our function at these inflection points which is you just simply plug in these values to our function and we get this and again, I'm going to go over it quickly. It's just plugging it in. And so graphically, what have we found? We found the mode. And this is for any n. It's always n minus 1. The inflection points are at n minus 1 plus the square root of n minus 1. And then, and then you, you subtract the square root of n minus 1 to find this inflection point. So what I thought I would do is create a triangle here. Okay. Now graphically on a computer, there's there's you know you underestimate here and overestimate and underestimate in the same way here. So I thought, man, that's going to be a pretty close approximation to the area under the curve. And so that's what I set out to do. So let's estimate this area with this triangle. And area under the curve is one half the base times the height. Okay. Well, we know the height because you just plug in the mode and then you get this. So that is this point. That point is n minus 1 
and then this value. So now we need to find the base, which is, so we need to, and the way I'm going to do it is I find the slope, find where it intersects the x-axis, so then we get this point B. We do the same thing for A, and then we just take the difference, and then that's that the, the base, the length of the base. So we do that. So to find the base, uh, the slope is rise over run. So it's the this uh, y value minus this y value, and then minus the x values, which is just the square root of n minus 1 when you take the difference of those. Now we're going to call this top part d1 and leave the bottom part uh, square root of n. And then the same thing for n m2 which is the left side of that triangle it's rise over run so you plug in the the x values to our function to get the y values and then and then the difference of these x's so this minus that you just get minus the square root of n and so now to use the point slope formula to calculate the you know the line equation of the line is this but we want the x-intercept, which means y equals 0. So when you solve this for x, you know, y equals 0, you get this. So we know the point. And we're going to use the mode. So this is n minus 1, and this is f of n minus 1. And so the b becomes this. So the x value is n minus 1. y is actually this f of n. And then the slope is this. And so we carry that square root of n to here. And then for a, it's actually, so it's the left slope, um, you know, the left side of the triangle, then you plug it in also. So we're using the same point, right? But we're using this slope. So then you plug this in, and notice that negative makes that a positive. So this is this is the you know a point so the length is actually just this difference right so it's uh, this minus that and so these n minus ones cancel and I factored out a square root of n common in both of these and then this is what's left over well it turns out that what's left over is actually really close to two times the square root of two pi it's really close. I mean, uh, a couple hundreds off, you know, just very close. <laughs> so, the area of the triangle, which is one half the base times the height, so we plug in what we know. Remember, this is 2 times square root of 2 pi. You know, don't forget this. So, one half the base, which is this, and the height we said was this. Well, the 2's cancel, and then this can be simplified, so that, you know that's negative, so it can be taken down. They're both raised to the same power. That's what this is, and this is two uh, square root of two pi times n minus one. Well, this this is actually Sterling's result for n minus one factorial. So it turns out that 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 triangle, which approximates the area under the gamma curve, quite accurately and that's why it's in minus one factorial that's the area of this triangle and so no matter what in you know it keeps getting shifted to the right and it rises up really fast but that triangle does a really good job in estimating the area of the curve and the area of that triangle is in minus one factorial well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.